All right. Uh, welcome again to this uh, class, uh, Algorithm Design and Analysis. Again, this is Mohamed Malkawi talking to you. Uh, let me a little bit uh, go into this interesting question. Where does the word algorithm come from? Uh, this is the word algorithm. We use it, use it quite often. Uh, where does it come from? Some people think that this comes from the Greek root of algos. Al algos is a Greek, Greek word, uh, which means pain. Well, although algorithms sometimes could be really pain, but that's not, uh, but that's not why algorithms are called algorithms, not because they are painful. Now, they could be painful for those who don't understand it, but they could be really fun if you get into the, in, in the habit of creating algorithms, designing algorithms, then you will be uh, absolutely great. So, so it's not really pain. Uh, but the name comes, uh, interestingly enough, from a ninth century mathematician. He's from the Islamic civilization. Uh, he's an uh, uh, Arab, uh, Persian, Islamic uh, mathematician during the ninth century. His name is Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ibn Musa Al Khawarizmi. No, pay attention to this. That's his family name, uh, Al Khawarizmi. Now, Al Khawarizmi. So if you take this Al alone, Al Ga, until here, Al Garizm. So if I want to somehow translate this word, we'll say L K H, uh, which is in Arabic K H, uh, convert that to G, and then uh, the W is O, then R, then I, then Z M algorithm. Actually, there was a time when the word algorithm in uh, the TH, the algorithm, in some pronunciation in uh, uh, in the Arabic, it's Z, which is which could be written as TH. So algorithm or algorithm, that's how it used to be called in the past, algorithm. Uh, by some uh, uh, Europeans in the uh, 14th century. But that's where the, the word now. Al Khawarizmi, or the inventor of algorithms, he was best known as the writer of some another book called Al Kitab Al Muhtasar, which is the brief book in arithmetic and algebra. So he was really the guy who invented algebra from which the modern word algebra derives. Now, this is just historical in information for some people who don't really know where the word algorithm come from. And so it does come from uh, for the person who was the first to talk about very precise sequence of instructions to uh, develop certain uh, procedures. Uh, that's, that said, let me go down and say, well, now, if I want to write an algorithm, whether it's uh, started by al khwarizmi or by us today, especially in computer science and computer engineering, uh, we talk about programs are concrete representations of algorithms. Actually, the code, if I want to write uh, a piece of code, let me uh, open a new slide here and show you what I mean by, uh, by what I want to say. Okay, when I write the statement, when I say for i equal one to hundred, this is translated in the computer as follows. Make a counter, start the counter with a value equal one, Start the counter with a value equal one, and let's say, do the following. Say, x 
equal x plus i. Finish. This is my statement. And before that, let me put the word here x equal 0. So I'm starting. This is a small piece of program, could be correct syntact syntactically or not. But I say x equals 0, starting with a loop with 100 iterations. Every time I have a new iteration, the, cl the clock or the counter change from start with 1, x now equal x plus 1. Then next count, when I say, so actually, let me go through the execution now x equals 0, okay, then i equals 1, then x equals x plus 1 equals 1, that's iteration number 1, okay, uh, okay, let me do another here. Actually, no, that's not what I want. I wanted to do. Let me do it this way. Let me do the iterations in boxes. Okay. Okay. So that's iteration number one. Iteration number two. No, also this is not right because this is called initialization. So I'll put this as my initialization. So I'll call this initialization which is step number one, it's not part of the loop. And here that's my iterations. Okay. So this iteration number one, iteration number two, I equal two. So now x equal x plus 1, x now it was 1, this becomes 2, okay, one more, keep the iteration all the way until i equal 100, and here I will have uh, the dot, 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 Okay, now the last will be 99 plus 1 equal 100. So I just updated my value x from 1, from 0, starting from 0 all the way to 100, so it becomes 100. These are my iteration 1, iteration 2, iteration n. This is my code. So my code, this is what I wanted to say, this code, this piece of program, is translated in algorithmic manner in steps. So each step means something. So that's what I meant by here. Computer programs are con concrete representations of algorithms. There is an algorithm which I converted and translated into uh, steps, and those steps are executed by a computer or by a person. Now I could have added these numbers just like the song for the beer or the coke. It is an precise algorithmic manner. Now the whole point of this course is to develop computational techniques that can be used in any programming language. Pay attention to this any programming language. In algorithm, I'm not interested in creating a program, a programming language, a specific program. I am interested in developing an architectural uh, design. I'm designing something which can be implemented by any programming language. It's just like a building. 
you put your blueprints for your building let's say the building has uh, it's a two story building has uh, three bedrooms have some two bathrooms has living room etc has entrance and you do the design you do the drawing now if you give this drawing to any uh, civil engineer or any contractor he should be uh, he should be able to build it whether he use uh, linen stone whether he uses uh, bricks whether he uses some concrete walls whether he uses aluminum or uh, wood that's irrelevant but the building at the end of the day would be exactly as we uh, uh, envisioned it by the architect by the architect so the architect actually is an algorithmic designer he designs uh, he provides algorithm for building a house a bridge uh, a car or making the design for some vehicle and so on now the syntactic details Syntactic means the structure of a language. C, C, uh, C++. I don't know why this, the plus plus are not visible here. C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, uh, any other language are irrelevant. Each and every language should be able to, uh, to implement that algorithm, if you will. So I'm not interested in algorithm as a programming language uh, it's it, actually it's a design that can be implemented using any programming language uh, or no import otherwise the algorithm is not really an algorithm if you if it's very specific to a specific tool what we really want is closer to what you would write in the comments of a real program I remember when I made my example here on the uh, beer when I started putting the uh, comments start from 99 until 1 those are the comments so the algorithm would really look more like comments in a program so the comments in the program are the ones that describes what the algorithm should be uh, should be doing so that's what uh, and also this is what I have just written also the English pure English it's not as good to describe algorithms algorithms should not be described in plain language let's say in the singing please sing the song about uh, the uh, bread about bread or 99 bottles of uh, uh, coke or Pepsi or some soda and sing every time you uh, you drink or you finish one get another one and start singing that's not the way to do it either so algorithms have a lot of structure especially their conditions their loops their recursions keep repeating something you have to be able to represent the, rep the reputation the loops the conditions uh, which are far too easily hidden by unstructured prose or some statements so English is full of ambiguities when I say English I don't really mean English language per se it could be any language it could be russian it could be arabic it could be persian it could be chinese languages are meant to be ambiguous because people when they listen to the words they can read the uh, impressions of the person who are who is talking they can read between the lines they can predict what is it that you really meant by this word sometimes words have multiple meanings um, uh, and let's say if you are uh, talking about the uh, the sea as an ocean or as a, a reservoir of water or you could talk about sea of emotions which is, means there are lots of emotions in my heart or you can talk about sea of memory which means you are talking about a computer system which has extremely large number of memories those the if you were putting these talking to someone about the sea of something uh, probably he would know the context in what context you are talking about are you talking about the context of swimming or context of emotions or context of building supercomputers so the, the languages have ambiguities they have uh, subtleties they have shades of meanings but algorithms must be precise must be accurate they cannot be uh, ambiguous 
uh, there is natural tendency to describe repeated operations informally. Uh, do this first, then do this second, and so on. That's algorithmic. Uh, languages, they don't like that. Sometimes you feel bored if you, I keep telling you, you, you know, please go and get the first brick, put it on the, on the building. Then please go and get me the second brick, put it next to the previous one. Then bring the third one, put it next to the... That's, that becomes really uh, sickening. So it's a go and get me hundred bricks and please put them in the right place where they belong to. That's how we say it in English. In algorithms, you have to be more uh, precise. To make the description unambiguous, we must explicitly specify the behavior of every iteration. That is uh, how algorithms work. In other words, what do I use? If I don't use a programming language, if I don't use a natural language, what do I use? Oh, we use what's something called pseudocode. Pseudocode is something which looks like a code, but it's not a code. It's written in a uh, natural language, but it doesn't sound like uh, a language. So the pseudocode uses the structure of formal programming languages and mathematics to break algorithms into primitive steps. But the primitive steps themselves may be written using mathematics, pure English, or an appropriate mixture of two. So the, that's what pseudocode is. Uh, just like the uh, example I put right here, I think, uh, where was that? Ah. Now, for i equal n down to 2, this is more of a programming language. I would rather say uh, uh, starting from n bottles until all bottles are gone. That's more like pseudocode. Or I still can use for i equal n down to 2 because this is more like the word down to 2 down to two is English, it's not really a programming language, it's uh, more of an English, so that's the, the idea here. So the pseudocode uses the structure of formal languages and there are uh, primitives, well written pseudocode reveals the internal structure of the algorithm but hides irrelevant implementation details. So I don't tell you how to implement it, what like in the loop when I say uh, do certain repeat a certain operation a hundred times. I'm not telling you to use for loop or while loop or repeat until. So that's hidden. That's up to you. Making the algorithm much easier to understand, analyze, debug, and implement. Uh, I will end this lecture by putting some guidelines. If, when we start writing algorithms, be consistent. Like use standard imperative programming keywords. Use the word F, use then, else, while, for, repeat, until, case. Those are uh, imperatives. Uh, annotation, like variable value, some arrays, functions, bigger, smaller. Those we need to use. Indenting, everything is carefully indented so that you know where, if you have two blocks, within the same block you indent to the right, the things that go within that block. And when you finish that uh, block, you just start the indenting from scratch. Okay. Uh, don't add unnecessary syntactic sugar like braces, braces uh, or begin end tags. Careful indentation is almost always enough instead of putting some, because sometimes you put underline or you put a brace, uh, some brace or bracket to emphasize. Don't use that emphasis because the one who is reading the algorithm may not understand what exactly you, you mean by that. Use some mnemonic algorithm and variable names. Uh, don't use X, Y, Z for a variable, for, for example, the average. Don't use uh, X 
for an average, use the word average, use medium, use medium, use all of these. Uh, short but complete words are better than single letters. We use single letters like x times y or x, x equals y in our programming languages uh, in math. But when we say the algorithms, let's say, if I will say the number of uh, create, uh, I want to make an algorithm that makes sure that the number of boys equal number of girls in a certain classroom. Uh, I will say when they enter the, the, the room, uh, I'll say uh, for every uh, male entering the room, uh, add one to the counter. And on another block, for every female uh, uh, entering to the room, add one to, count, to the second counter. I have two counters. I will say create two counters, counter M, counter male, counter female. For uh, every male entering the room, Increment the counter male by one for every female entering the room count increment the counter female by one and then uh, When all uh, Students or all people have entered the hall check if counter male equal counter female if counter male is uh, Less than counter female allow one more male to enter something like this So you say male counter male don't use the word C one uh, C1 or C2 for counters. Uh, use standard mathematical notation for standard mathematical things. For example, when we say x times y, x we use x dot y instead of x star y for multiplication. We say x mode y instead of x percentage y, although they both mean the same thing. These are just simple notations. Avoid mathematical notation if English is clear. For example, insert a into x. Insert a into into word x. I would say into word. Or at the end of word. Or before. Or insert a before every b. Maybe preferable to insert x comma e, which is more of a mathematical abstract notation. Each statement should fit on one line, and each line should contain either exactly one statement or exactly one structure, structuring element. Those are, uh, don't use fixed width typeface to typeset to the code. It's much harder to read than normal typesets. For example, don't typeset keywords like for or while in a different style. Style means italics or underline and so on. Uh, Use of italics or small caps, uh, you have to use them very carefully so you don't confuse the one who reads the algorithm or who wants to implement it. Uh, I will stop right here. Next time I will talk more about correctness and uh, timing. Let's see, I hope I did not. Yeah, this is a bit uh, longer uh, video, but never, nevertheless, uh, it's meant to really explain things carefully. Thank you very much, and we'll meet in the next video and meet.